What's up, guys? So today we are continuing the discussion. Um, just to give you a heads up, my internet has been kind of spotty. So if it kind of like freezes, which you know has happened the past two guests, just give it a minute and um, it will eventually catch up. So um, so yeah. So just know that sometimes my internet gets kind of weird, but just let it circle and like in a minute or so, um, it eventually catches up. Today. Um, my guest is the one and only Jay Chris, and um, he will be joining us in a little bit. Hi, Stacy. And um, yeah, so just as the same, if you guys have questions, if you guys have comments, if you're feeling anything he says, go ahead and, and leave it down there. There's question cards, there's a comment section. And um, if I see it, I'll go ahead and read it out loud so it's, it's in the video and he understands. I'm, I'm sure like all this week, um, just want to thank my guests, my friends, my brothers, my sisters that have been in here supporting. Um, it's been very emotional, the conversations. Um, really, like, I mean, it, it goes from grief, it goes from anger, it goes from sadness. So, yeah, be prepared. If you just need to take a breath, you need to just take a, a still pause, you know, do it. It is very uh, emotionally charged discussion, and um, I just appreciate um, just all my friends being really vulnerable to share and and be in here. Um, what's up, Grant? Alisa's in here, and Stacy says thank you for doing all these videos, Anna. It definitely helps with getting educated and educating others. Yes, um, definitely uh, learning. For me too, you know, keep it real. I've been learning from each and every one and uh, I'll probably be doing like a summary after all the speakers speak. Hi, Eddie. Uh, yeah, he says, thank you for using your platform. Um, yeah, uh, I, you know, it, it just made sense to do. Uh, I was already used to talking to people. I'm a, a therapist. So yes, it, it just made sense. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Kelly. Oh, she's from Indonesia. Thank you for joining us. What's up, Jozar? Here's Jay Chris. Uh, let's wait for him to request. Um, welcome, everybody, you know, as, as people roll in. Um, again, just letting you know, sometimes the internet is kind of spotty, so if it freezes up, just give us a minute. Jay, Hello. Jay, man, What's up? I'm ready, man. I, I'm ready. I, I have my water. I have my tissue. <laughs> have my tissue. I'm ready for you, bro. Wow. I'm ready. I, I watched your video. First of all, let me just say, man, the feels, Thank the you. feels. You. Yes. I, I, gotta, I just, yeah. I got to give a lot of love to uh, the homie Matt Madonna because um, that's, that's the homie that shot that video and you know, if it wasn't for him, I never would have been able to, to put that message out. He was able to, to capture that for me. And, you know, much respect to him. So, like, I definitely want to give him his respect and let people know he's he's out here in Cali and he's ready to work. So hit him up. Shoot Madonna on IG. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I know you've already been doing these talks. What's that been like for you? I mean, I'm, it's nothing new to me. You know, I've been talking. <laughs> I've been I'm talking. Um, I'm just glad that people are like listening with a little bit more of an open mind now, I guess. Uh, however, you know, like my, my subject matter has changed a little bit. But um, I think that that's kind of why people have been so uh, open to, to like listening, I guess, because it's not new. It's not like I just started popped up out of nowhere and just became outspoken. Um, I just kind of realized that it wasn't a lot of people kind of like stepping into that leadership role for this in particular movement. So, um, I, you know, I just felt obligated to do so. And also just cause through my trial and error process of being outspoken, I figured out how to navigate and how to communicate with different groups and different factions within the community. So that's kind of like why I feel a little bit more comfortable doing so. Um, a lot of people may disagree, but, um, that's okay. That's okay because those disagreements spark conversation 
and that's when the exchange of knowledge happens. So I get, I think that's important. Um, however, there's a lot of trolls out there too. So, uh, you know, a lot of people just kind of want to like just throw in negativity for, for no reason. Um, I understand that negative comes with it, but at least have a little bit more factual substance to back your opinion. That way we, I can respect your, your opinion. But if you're just throwing out stuff and then nothing to back it up, then it's just like, you're just spewing hate and negativity and that's not necessary. Yeah, I agree, 100. And people in the comments, Jonathan Sison just said, you've been keeping it 100 from day one, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, we do appreciate that about you. Thank um, you. And I, I had to ask you, you know, I know you're both from two different cultures, but definitely as a black man growing up, what was your experience like? Uh, I mean, I kind of had like a split experience. Um, I spent uh, a lot of like my, my youth uh, kind of going back and forth between here and the East Coast because uh, my family is originally from the East Coast. So I would spend a lot, like a lot of my summers over there. Um, so it was like a really, really big culture shock. Um, going from the East Coast to the West Coast. So uh, I had a lot of trouble kind of like fitting in, um, trying to balance out like slang accents going back and forth from the East Coast. I would go to the East Coast and like some of my cousins would be like, oh, you talk like a, like a Cali kid. And then I would come back to the West Coast and anything that I may have like picked up just from being out there, I would, you know, I would say, and if it would be like, oh, you're talking like you're from the East Coast, like, why are you talking like that? Da, da, da. So in elementary school, it was really, really difficult. Uh, I wasn't really aware of being um, biracial until later in my teens when I, when I, when I found out. And um, it was just a culture shock there, too. Um, but it also connected a lot of dots as to, like, why I felt like I didn't fit in with certain things. Um, I spent a lot of time, I guess, trying to answer questions that were beyond my age. Like, I there's things that I should have been asking, like older people and like older references that I just, since I was shy, I was like, I'll just figure it out on my own. And I wish I had been more outspoken. I wish I had been less shy to gather knowledge about a whole different culture that I wasn't aware of, you know? Um, growing up 15 years and thinking that I'm just one thing and then finding out that I'm mixed, it, it was like, it was a shock, you know? So I think that what's important is that I kind of like take what I utilize from my youth and um, take what was good and really make sure I keep what was like negative out of that. So I'm very, very eager to ask questions now. I'm very, very eager to really like talk to people and have a conversation to where we're exchanging first before I'm giving any kind of educating. I think when you have these one-sided uh, conversations, that's when they kind of turn into lectures. And so like, for example, if I wanted to have this conversation with you, Anna, I would first start off by saying, how are you doing? What's oh, good with mm -hmm. you? What you've been mm -hmm. up to? What's new with you? Before I even get to what I want to talk about, because mm -hmm. I want to have that rapport first and I want to have that exchange mm -hmm. to where it doesn't seem like, I'm just like, hey, Anna, you need to listen. This is what it is, da 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 No, we're not going to get anywhere like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, there's two sides to where there's the radical side of people who are just like, boom, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, I need this, justice for me, da 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 And there's people who are like, cool, let's move with logic. Here's the, here's the literature. Here's where you can go to learn. This is what you can do to help. Uh, it's okay to say, I don't know what to say. It's okay to say, um, I, have, I just haven't spoken out because I've been scared. That's fine. Just, just say that, you know? So there's two sides. And I think that growing up, I was only on one of those sides. I was only on like the radical side and I, I wasn't on the mentally aware and um, willing to learn side. So that's been something that I really, really wanted to push to people now. I don't want people to go, especially this younger generation, I don't want them to keep their mouth shut and be scared to ask for help, ask for knowledge, um, say, I don't know. Because somewhere along the line, saying I don't know became like taboo or, or that became almost wrong to say I don't know. And I don't know, I don't know where that came from, but it did arise. So now I think I just want to encourage people to gain knowledge, start conversations, start healthy conversations and start genuine conversations with no uh, predetermined outcome of how this, this, this conversation is going to go. Just let it happen organically 
and don't put like a marker and say, I need to have this, I need to make this point, I need to make this point, I need to make this point, I need to make this point. Because if you don't get to those markers, you're gonna have a sense of, it's gonna feel incomplete. You're gonna feel like, ah, that wasn't, it didn't go as well as I thought it could have gone. So just go with an open heart and an open mind and just approach it that way. And there are people who are doing that, you know? And that's why the peaceful protests remain peaceful because like they have a collective understanding that we're here for one reason. We're here to get our message across. We're here to make sure that it's done in a peaceful manner. And we're here to make sure that no harm comes from anybody here or anybody else. Like we don't want, our, we don't want police to get harmed. We don't want military to get harmed. We don't want innocent bystanders to get harmed. Just that understanding. And then there's the radical protests, the, the Brother Malcolm protests, the by any means necessary protests which are also very, very effective. And it draws a lot of attention and it makes people be like, yo, listen to what we have, feel my pain, feel my passion, give me the attention, it's time to listen, that gets done. But it's harder to figure out what happens next after that. Hmm. So it's like, now we had everybody's attention, but now what? Now that's when the logical people need to step to the forefront and then be like, thank you, thank you for knocking down that door, but we, we'll take it from here. You know what I mean? And then so it has to be like a little bit of a role with reversal. So um, we mentioned on the Steezy thing that a lot of us are we try, we're trying to reach the same goal. We're saying the same thing, trying to say the same thing. We're just saying it in different ways, but we're on the same path. Some people's path may be going like this. Some people's path may be going straight up like that, but we're going the same way. We need to figure out how to meet and go on the same way together. And when that happens, that's when change happens. And I think a lot of it was sparked last night. I think the, the, the Steezy panel was a very, very, very good start. Um, and I just well, hope more stuff like that continues. You know? what, did, what, did you, what did you take away from the Steezy panel? It was good to, it's, I think one of the worst feelings is feeling alone. Mm -hmm. And it was good to find out, to, as I know David uh, Sling for a very, very long time. Me and him have always had this really cool connection and, and, and understanding, and we've always been very, very, I hate to use this word, but we've been very, very woke to the situations. So we would have these like small little like side conversations and give each other looks like, mm, you know, that wasn't right, you know? And we've just been waiting to the right time because I think everything, it's important that everything has its time. And um, if you try to like rush that time, it's probably not gonna work out in your best interest. So we were given this platform and all of us were kind of like, yes, this is what it's building, building to. This is what uh, we've wanted. We just needed this platform and Steezy provided it for us. And just the way that we were able to bounce off of each other and understand that we feel the same way, but we also do see things a little bit differently just because of where we're at in our lives or our ages or where we're at regionally. We see a lot of different things, you know, like David's out in Garden Grove. So he doesn't see what I see in North Hollywood. You know what I mean? But Kira is in the Valley, so she sees some of it as well. You know what I mean? But then um, Brandon is in a whole different area where he's going to feel something different, maybe even experience something different. So that was the first time I was able to like be with a group of collective minds that were all wanted the same goal. And we also all knew how to articulate properly to the community. Mm. Because sometimes there's like, you can have four people from the community and one person from the industry. And that industry person... They got stuff to say that's very, very important, very, very valid, and very, very true. But since they're not from the community, they may not know how to speak to the community. You know, they're speaking, they're used to speaking to the industry where it's full of grown adults who are ready to like, their skin is tough because they're auditioning and auditioning and hearing no, 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 yes, no, no, no. You know what I mean? So that we build that tough skin in the industry, the community, it's a whole different way of, of mental preparation for their, their shows. And once you get on the team, it's like, cool, you're on the team. Now what? You know, so it's a different level of communication. And there was people who were coming at us saying that we were being too nice. You know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There was people saying that there was two, uh, two individuals saying that we come in for us, you know, supporting us and coming for us at the same time, which is weird. Yeah, I don't get that. Happy that. They're happy that we're speaking, but they're not satisfied with what we're speaking because maybe we may not be in the same faction. There's a logical faction and the radical faction. And because we may not be in whichever one they are in, they're kind of just wanting us to kind of do things their way without seeing that we're gonna get the same, we're trying to get the same goal accomplished. And we, you can't please everybody. 
And yeah. that was one thing that uh, when Connor approached me from Steezy, he said, we want to do this. We know it's not our place to do it, but we know that we have a platform and we know that we can get your voices heard to a different, to a different level with like a wider platform. And every single one of us was like, yes, thank you. No hesitation, you know? But other people were viewing it as, oh, they're benefiting because now they're using their black members of the community to do the work for them. But they're doing it on platform. And we're just like, yo, like, why do you have to look at it that way? You know, why do you have to sit here and tear it down when we're still trying to do something positive? There's no, there's no need. Like, why are we pointing fingers at each other? You know, we, and I always say, I was like, we know who to point the fingers at. So why aren't we just pointing those fingers there instead of trying to figure out how to point them at each other? Yeah, that's that's a good point. We we are all on the same team, especially right now. Mm -hmm. And what you mentioned about um, having a collective, having a group, and knowing that you're not alone, that's huge, right? Yeah. Who who have you found was supportive of you? And even though you're getting flat for not being, I guess, radical is what you said. Who's been supporting you this whole time? Yeah, I've been getting a lot of people who. It's one of those things where it's like. Uh, they you know on, on Facebook, we have a tendency of not knowing our friend's birthdays until it tells you that it's so-and-so's birthday today. And then that may be, you go and you write happy birthday, and then you start realizing that this may be the only time that you've spoken to this person, and it's because it's on their birthday. There's some people who I've never spoken to before, but they know me through either taking my classes or I've judged them at a competition and given their team like critiques that have kind of like resonated with them. So they felt a certain level of, comfort in talking to me and then i was getting dms like i support you thank you so much for speaking uh, i've looked at you as a leader for so long i've respected you for so long and thank you for like saying this thank you for opening my mind thank you for educating me i really, really appreciate it and i was just like whoa this is this is crazy and then my company is just riding for me like mob is riding hard and we are one of the most diverse companies ethnically in in the community like there's really no heavy there's no like majority we're literally like almost even across the board and they just are so eager to learn and so mm -hmm. eager to be uh, ready to spread the knowledge that they're given and um I, I support that i support them and just the general um young generation from the company like a lot of like teams like um like prime d and a couple other teams collective faction that are on their way coming up they're still trying to make a name for themselves like they're reaching out to me and, and it's cool because I like having that kind of connection to those teams that aren't in the forefront yet, but the talent is there and the drive is there and the heart is there. And now knowing that their heart is there in a different way, aside from just dance, like they genuinely care about making a change. It puts me, it puts that team at a whole higher respect level for me too, because I'm like, not only are you guys good, passionate dancers, you're good people. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're genuinely good people and that's what I that's what I like to see and that's the support that I love to see um, as well as the people overseas like a lot of people will start the comments off but I'm not quite sure what's happening in America but I appreciate you standing up and I and you've inspired me to look into it more and mm -hmm. I'm sorry you guys are going through these things that's horrible and then they kind of go into the injustices that they may be going with in their country but then they always bring it back to but that's just here. I just want to commend you on you fighting the fight over there. It's inspiring and it makes me want to fight over here and stuff like that. So it's not really one of those all lives matter situations. It's more of like a, you inspired me to want to fight for my equality here. You know, I'm being oppressed here. Now I want to stand up and fight for it because I see what you're fighting for and how much you're passionate about that. So yeah. that's really, really cool. Yeah, man. And, and you have been fighting this like pretty publicly. Like I, I saw that you had called out some of the agencies, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I saw all that and then people started to support. And um, yeah, what was going through your mind when that happened? Um, someone got to be the bad guy. <laughs> I got to do it to get change done. Like uh, it's, it was one of those, um, you, can be a, you can be a Malcolm or you can be a Martin. And I started out being a Martin, you know, and I still feel like I'm a Martin, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I warned people, I gave people, I went publicly and I was like, if you guys don't speak out, I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I gave it, I think like a day. And then mm -hmm. I was like, wow. And I went and I looked at their timelines and I, and I was like, nothing, not even a, a, 
a flyer, not even like a, an emotionless flyer saying we support Black Lives Matter, coming from agencies who is probably 80% African American. You know, I don't know the, I don't know all the numbers, so don't quote me on that. But we, it's, I think it's a fair, it's fair to say that we, that we make up a, a strong percentage of the entertainment industry. We make up a strong percentage of the dance industry specifically. And there's a lot of agencies out there gaining money off of our labor. They may show us to the gig and they may direct us there, but we still doing the footwork. We're still putting it in. So you're, you're gaining that 15 to 20% off of my check for my work, for my passion, from my culture. But you can't even send out an email. Like that was what really got to me. Like if you didn't want to go public, that's cool. But they didn't even send out emails to their clients saying, we're here for you. We support you. Nothing. So oh. I was like, no, nah, I'm not letting this fly. Boom, 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 boom. I only got 7,000 followers, something like seven, seven, not, not a lot. I only got a small amount of followers in comparison to the people who have these huge platforms. And it only took me four hours, four hours. And all of a sudden block, Delta. GTA, CTG, mm -hmm. movement, MSA. Yeah. And all it took was just speaking out. That's yeah, Matt B, Matt B is in here and he says, I can't express how proud I am of my brother for being a leader and a voice for the dance community. Much love to you uh, for this discussion. Thank you for love continuing you, the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's family. That's one of my dearest friends in life, you know, and uh, he's always been supportive. I love Mappy to death. He's always been very, very um, aware and I think that's the important thing, just being aware. Uh, I think uh, being knowledgeable can come, but it's just important to just be aware. Um, there's no way that you can um, join a dance, a hip hop dance troupe and feel some sense of obligation to like, the roots of the culture that you are like benefiting. Um, Word. Yeah, keep talking. It's okay. It might freeze up. It'll catch up. Relatable way. I think that if I want to learn Spanish, right, um, I could read, I could read Rosetta Stone. I could read a book. I could take a class. Yeah, I see But if you actually want to hold a real conversation and really get to talk to someone, that conversation, you gotta you gotta talk to somebody. You gotta talk, talk to somebody who's in it. You can't just learn it from, from a book. And I think with hip hop, if you want to talk to hip hop dancer, you can preach and label yourself as a hip hop dancer. You have to know everything about hip hop. You know what I mean? And that, that isn't even necessarily limited to the foundations of hip hop, but you have to know the culture. You can't go on, that's not you're just going on stage and you're just perpetrating. You might as well be an actor. Right. Because you're not. I hear you. That's like the easiest way to put it. Like, just, just respect it as much as you would respect your own. You know, and don't just benefit off. Of yeah, I'm. I'm still here. It's it's just the the lag. Yeah, I'm here though. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah, it just keep talking because then it, it just kind of catches up. Um, what what would you say, I guess, to the people that were kind of radical about it and kind of disappointed that uh, you were so nice i guess how do you reconcile that that side yeah i say thank you thank you mm -hmm. thank you for speaking because mm -hmm. silence is the cousin of you know it's, it's just not going to help the silence is just the cousin of hate you know like mm -hmm. so people need to see both sides if they were only hearing my side of the story then they're not getting the full picture they're getting this but they're not getting this you mm -hmm. know what i mean that's not good Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be aware of both sides so you can make an honest choice on which side you want to be on. 
Um, and it's not even about choosing teams or anything like that. It's just about being aware. It's about like understanding uh, the intentions on both sides and realizing that you can come to a, a collective goal together. It doesn't have to be you know, one way or the other. I think that I understand where they're coming from because I feel their pain. I feel their anger. I feel it all the time. I've lived it. You know what I mean? People think that I'm like younger than I actually am, but I've been, I've lived this. I was here for the LA riots. You know what I mean? So when I see people writing now, I'm like, I feel y'all. I know what you're feeling, but what next? Like, cool, you looted, you broke into something, you got something that you didn't need because you thought you were doing it for a cause. That's cool. You genuinely thought in your heart you were doing it for a cause. I can't deny you that. But now what? So now when you're looking at your brand new TV that you just looted and you're watching the same thing that you were watching on your phone because it's still just nothing but despair on TV now, like what, what now? What are you going to do after you reap the benefits of the cause? How are we going to push the cause even further? And that's kind of like where my mind is at right now. So when I see those comments in, that, in the forum, I'm like, I feel you, but I'm trying to let you know that we can get there. We're going to get there. Just, just let us do it our way here. Because how we handle it here in the community, the dance community, is not the same way we might handle it somewhere else. Because it's a different demographic. And you have, once again, it's about understanding and navigating who you're speaking with. And that way we can get through to people. Clearly, the way that they were coming across was the wrong way. Because it turned the whole chat, all the comments just started attacking them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because they, they were making everybody uncomfortable by being so passionate in their, in their direction, they didn't bother trying to see anything else. So they're saying, 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 demanding, demanding, demanding. And people at first were like, okay, I get it. Okay, cool. But after a while, people were like, yo, okay, chill. Like, why? Like, we, okay, now it's just too much. So you have to know when to give and when to kind of like pull back a little bit as well. You know, yeah. and, you know, you've been, you've been conducting these boba talks, so you know how to read the conversation and you know how, when you need to kind of like speak up a little bit more to pull more out of the people you're interviewing, but you also know when to reserve your, your comments and just sit back and just listen. And I think that's what needs to happen. Dang it. Are you still there, Jay? I'm still here. Sorry, there's like airplanes coming in and out of my area. Can you see me now? I can see you, yeah. It's okay, sorry. So, okay. Yes, and, and pertaining to that too, Darkie mentioned yesterday in uh, the Boba Talks that it's hard to hear someone uh, when there's anger, you know, mm -hmm. up there. It's hard to to listen to it and have a, a discussion and, and understand their heart when there's, there's just a lot of yelling or screaming, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I hear your conversation really, really be about awareness and communicating, you know? So that's a huge, huge change. What do you think kind of taught you that? Yeah, I, man, that's fun. The way that Darky said that, I was that. I was like out of anger, like, because I would see something and I'm like, that's wrong. Say it. And I <laughs> this doesn't always go the right way, you know? Um, so it, it took me burning bridges. It took me uh, getting into a lot of uh, verbal, vocal situations that could have been uh, handled differently. It took me, like, for lack of better words, it took me, like, really screwing up and then doing some like self, like soul searching and realize that I need to, Jay can't always be right all the damn time to be the defender of good all the time. It's not always my obligation to speak on something publicly. It's okay to converse with people around me just to see if my, my um, point of view is a little bit like understanding, you know, and it's not coming from just like hate, hate and anger, you know. So it, it does come with maturity. It comes with a sense of also just a history of being vocal, though. Like someone who is quite, like, quite as a church mouse all the time, 
Well, you know what? I think black lives matter. And they've always mattered. They matter. They matter then. They matter now. We're dying. And people are going to be like, yo, whoa, where'd that come from? You know what I mean? And then they're going to be like, I've just been holding it in for so long. And then as soon as they say that, they, the others, will take that and use that against them. They will be like, oh, you've been holding this in for a long time. So why is it so convenient for you to say it now? Because it's cool uh -huh. to speak out now. Because it's trending to speak out now. So to refrain from that happening, I am encouraging the young generation now, speak your mind, but use your brain first. There is a filter mm -hmm. that needs to go from here to here, then come out. Okay, you have to have that filter. Um, yeah, and, I, and there's, some people in the, there's some people in this live chiming in that I know they feel me because I know they're just as outspoken, you know, um, and, but they have also come to that point in their life where they've matured and now they know how to conduct, they conduct themselves. Like it's literally become part of being an adult. You know, we think that we're grown based upon how many, how old we are. Like I'm in my twenties. I'm a grown ass man. Really? Really? Are you though? Because a grown ass man would have to experience a certain thing in life to get done that. And sometimes people don't experience these things until they're in their mid. And the others, like myself, will we experience these things when I was in my teens, you know, that mature earlier, you know, like I lost my dad when I was 17. At that moment, mm. I became the man of the house. And I didn't have a choice in it. I didn't want it. I take it, though, you know, so I matured at a little bit of a of an earlier age. But in that happening, in me becoming the man of the house so quickly, it also indirectly made me feel like I'm not wrong. I know what I'm talking about all the time because I'm the man. I'm the man in my household, so I'm the man everywhere I go. That was the furthest thing from, you know, and it wasn't until I came across strong men who knew how to conduct themselves in a, in a manner to where it was respectable, but they also got their point across. People like Arnell, he leads with kindness, but I know that he, like when, when Arnell needs to get his point across, he will get his point across. Mario Navarretti, Oof, that's one of the people who, like, you know, who I really put a lot of respect on. Gary Kendall, I have the utmost respect, rest the peace, but he also taught me to like understand how to conduct myself and be kind, but you are still able to be cordial and be uh, direct at the same time. You know, he taught me, these people taught me how to be leaders, you know, so, and then there's a couple more people, even like Janet Langer taught me a lot, you know, I learned from Stacey Mendoza as as well, how to be a leader. From Patrick Alferis, how to be a leader. Nikki Gregorio taught me how to. And these are people who are still leaders to this day, in their own in their own right, you know. Um, and and they also learned taught people how to, which is also very very important. And for me, I think understanding, like I said, once that anger, that immediate need to. Uh, address something, I understand where that comes from, but I just want to encourage people that now, because we're in such a sensitive time, that if you are going to open your mouth, know exactly what you're going to say and understand that there will be people immediately around that will try to undermine what you're saying. So you have to speak with intellect and know what you're talking about and be able to have facts on top of facts on top of facts so no one can argue you. And it's a difficult thing because it takes time. And not everybody wants to take that time, but it will benefit you so much more if you do take that time and take a breath. And also I, I, I have people proofread. <laughs> literally, if I'm gonna make a statement, I will literally be like, like, Sarah, can you read this to make sure? I, I don't wanna offend, but I do want, I do have intentions. I don't wanna offend, offend, but I have to get my point across. Is this the best way to, to reach a different demographic, you know what I mean? I get, and then I can give that same thing to, and be like, yo, is this gonna get across to, all right? And, you know, so, this is the thing But once again, it's all about starting the conversation too, you know? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. You have a team that you have a good group of people to get uh, back, background, like feedback and support from. And also you're telling the, the young people now get educated, you know, know what's going on, do your research, yes. and then have something to say, right? Don't always yes. just kind of say stuff and you don't really know what you're saying. 
Yes, I agree with that. We, we were talking about that this whole time. The next steps really is empower the youth, right? They're next. Yeah. They're going to be the ones to lead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say to someone that's young right now? I had a, a kid. Um, well, he's not really a kid. He's like maybe in his late 20s. But he was asking me, yeah, that who's in charge of all of this? You know, like, is there a clear leader? Like, what is the next steps? What do you expect to see, Jay? What, what do you hope to see? I expect that I don't, care. I don't have any expectations. I have hopes. I yes. have hopes that these directors of these teams will really own that name director and not just let it be something that has to do with dance steps and the direction of the physical direction that the team is going in. I hope that our directors become leaders, become knowledgeable, become people that their dancers are comfortable talking to. Uh, you ha it has to start there. It has to start with our leaders, you know? Um, and that's just, I'm just pertaining to the community. Um, if it was like a kid off the street that came up to me and he was of a different ethnicity and he was like, hey, like, I don't know what's going on. What can I So people might not want to read and they're just and visually, if they learn better from visuals so they can go and stuff. Um, and I will also just explain to them my experiences because there's no better, uh, better instructor than actually, you know, just letting them know what I had to go through when I was their age, letting them know how, though the world is really messed up right now, it's still a little bit better than it was when I was younger because you have more resources at your grasp. Like the struggles that we, we went through, you can learn from our struggles. You know what I mean? The struggles that we had to learn from were different then too, you know, when I was younger. So explaining things in a relatable manner. You don't want to just come and just spit textbook facts because then now you're like in school and now you're just like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You want to make it relatable. So having conversations, uh, finding the right resources and regurgitating that information. You know, I think that there almost needs to be like a, like when you make the team, when you have, after you have your auditions, let's be like, all right, cool. Who here considers themselves a hip hop dancer, and he raised their hand. He's like, "Why? Why do you consider yourself a hip hop dancer? Because you can do these hip hop moves, or okay, so now that so if you're not really about the hip hop culture, that just makes you just a dancer. You're not a hip hop dancer because you're not taking everything that comes along with the title of it. And in tune, in hand in hand, hip hop culture goes in with black culture. So you will be learning if you really study hip hop, you will learn black culture too." And it doesn't have, I don't, I'm not saying you have to go watch the civil rights movement and you gotta do all that and know about Jim Crow laws. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm saying just figure out what it is for your culture. If you're a hip hop dancer, know hip hop and know the influences from black culture on hip hop. No one's saying that you have to get a PhD in black studies, liberal black studies, you know, join your, your closest BSU. You don't need to do that to be a hip hop dancer. You just have to be willing to then that hip hop and black culture go hand in hand. And now you have a responsibility to be able to be aware of what you are doing. You know, I would have to know a little bit about hip hop yeah. and in that I kind of have to get a little bit in touch with the so Yeah, that's how I would, that's the best way I get things to like educate these, these kids. And I need to get all the directors from all the teams and at least the SoCal, because I don't, I mean, NorCal will be, a, and I'll go up to NorCal if I need to, but I know there's leaders in NorCal. I don't need to go up there. I know there's people who feel the same way I am. Mama Kim up there. Mama Kim can go oh, from yes. <laughs> East Bay up to Seattle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mama Kim can handle that. But if mm -hmm. I got to be the one who does it out here, I will. Like, we can have a whole panel discussion at Mob HQ. And I will have all the directors and I will educate them on what I know. But I'm not the know-all, end-all, be-all. There's stuff that I don't know, too. So I will also bring other people in. Whatever I can't teach, I will bring people in to teach. If that's what we need to do, I'm down to do that. But people have to be wanting, people have to want that. I can't force it. Yeah. I can't go yeah. to ACA, GRB, 220, all these teams, uh, you know, uh, Collective Faction, I mentioned them. I can't go to Common Ground and TM and PAC and be like, you have to come to this panel and learn or else you can't be a hip hop dancer. I can't, I'm not gonna do that. They have to want 
to know. They have to want that information and want that knowledge. Yes, and both you and I know, right? We come from like way, way back. We know that hip hop is birthed from the community, birthed from the black and Latino community in New York. Uh, definitely, we've been working with marginalized uh, kids, at risk youth through Culture Shock for years, right? Um, but for those people that don't know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for those kids that don't understand, why is it important to teach hip hop? Why? It's a, it's not a trend. And I think that mm. sometimes people think it's a trend. TikTok, um, TikTok, Musical.ly, uh, those kind of apps, they've made hip hop trendy. Because they have literally like broke it down to like the skeleton and gave these basic movements to, to people. And they are t taking these things, they're, they're doing these dances, they're doing all of this stuff. Made. And then also, you've never stepped in the class, you're not really doing like the footwork to become a dancer but you're literally saying you're a hip-hop dancer because that way and i think people have to understand learn how to do movements or from watching ig or from watching youtube if you ain't in the studio if you ain't in these parking structures if you ain't in these sessions if you ain't going to these um, events you are not hip-hop you are just a dancer so don't disrespect the title and don't disrespect the genre of movement of hip hop dancing by not being completely diving into it. Just call yourself a dancer. That is perfectly fine. The world needs more dancers because the world needs more art. You know what I mean? So that is fine. But don't don't title yourself if you're not with it. Okay? Because hip hop dancing is not a trend. It wasn't a trend on ABDC. It's not a trend on So You Think You Dance. It's not a trend now. It's not going to be a trend. It's not going anywhere. It's almost 40 years old. Hip hop is almost 40. We ain't go, it's not going nowhere. It's only going to get older. There's a foundation. There's a history to it. Okay. TikTok is what? Three years old, two years old. Ain't no foundation of TikTok. It used to be musically. There's no history there. There's no rich history in that. All they're doing is benefiting and just throwing these moves in there like as a generator. Like when I started seeing people use these emojis for like directions of how to do a dance, I was like, yeah, arrow this way. Uh, arrow this way. Emoji hands up. This is the emoji. And like, I was like, wow, we're literally doing, we're teaching people how to dance through emojis. Like that is, that's, that's stupid. It's stupid. I'm just gonna put it out there. That's dumb. Okay. There's no quality to that. There's no soul to that. You know? So I, that's where it needs to stop. Like people need to stop trying to make this like a trend. It's not. People need to understand that you got to work for this. The more you work, the more respect you will get. So the other thing about people doing this for a year and then starting to teach and all that, that's a whole different other boba talk. But I'm saying like, people gotta <laughs> do the work because there is a rich history now to this hip hop thing. And myself, you, Arnell, there's people who really established, I came in, I'm second generation. So, and I respect it. I respect respect it so much and I'm not gonna let anybody like downplay or disrespect what what's been done and the, the foundation you know what I mean so if anything can come from that hip-hop is not a trend so stop treating it as such There's, it's not hashtag hip-hop dance it's the, it don't work like that nice Arnell is in here he says hip-hop is 47 years strong as a culture art form and social movement and you are 100 brother Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to count yes. 2020 as a year. We're not going to count 2020 as a year. So <laughs> next year, I'll yeah. still be 46, okay? Because this year don't count, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And I just want to say, too, like, you know, hip-hop, like, really changed, like, I guess, like, African-American uh, just r music and dance and culture. It's so rich, you know? We all fell in love with it, all of us, right? And... um the the way like black singers black dancers all of black culture etc it, it was so like influential 
And I feel like now in 2020, I fucking hate 2020. You know, it's 2020 just gave you the message that go ahead and kill black people. It's fine. Like what, what's going on? What do you think? I, well, it's funny. I had this conversation with my friend and, and he was just like, um, he's like, yo, do you ever wonder why like black people are just, and then, and then people are going to take this the wrong way, but, but it's, it's me. I don't give a fuck. People, he said, do you ever wonder why black people are just good at it? And then I was like, no, I know we're good at everything. Because the one thing that we needed, we weren't going to have. So we have to be good at everything else. We're not, we don't get equality, so we're going to get everything else. Physicality, we're smart, we're relatable, we are trendsetters. You know what I mean? Like, we are literally, we, we honestly, we make other things cool. Like, it's a known fact that people put black people around certain people to make them cool. Justin Bieber, that should be a prime example. It's a prime example. You know what I mean? Not taking anything away from his talent, but he would be in a completely different lane if he had different people around him. You know what I mean? And also, it makes black people make black people even cooler, which is, that just shows you, you know? And it comes from, the, it comes from culture. It comes from passion which also stems from oppression, which also stems from hard work to just get to be noticed. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like when, you hear people, when you hear black people sing, you hear that because that's coming from something that comes from pain. You know what I mean? Like that passion, it can't be replicated. You know what I mean? And that's why when they say things like, if you put this person behind a wall, you could tell if they're black or not by the way that they sing. That's true. You know what I mean? There are the exceptions. You know, but it's true. You can feel the soul in an African-American person's voice without even seeing them. Like, through the, like, go listen to Ultralight Beam and tell me that you don't feel something when Kelly Price's verse comes on. You know what I mean? You feel that. You know, Kirk Franklin has maybe five, maybe like six or eight lines in the end of that song. And it's so damn powerful. You know what I mean? You feel, because it comes from here. It's not faked. You have others who try to step into, they try to cross over, like, you have like the Robin Thicks, you know what I mean? The, the white boy who got soul, you know what I mean? It's because it's a genuine understanding. Like the way that he developed and the way that he trained his voice, he had certain resources and he had certain teachers that brought that, that made him feel something to where he was like, I can identify. So now when I have this passion in my voice, it's believable. It's not fake. It doesn't sound generic. It doesn't sound like, it, it was forced. And it's because you have to understand that structure. You know, I think people like, I'm still what says. I think that once there's a general understanding that we all know what it's like to try to be something and maybe you not, it doesn't feel quite, um, Okay, that's why I look. When I took Spanish in high school, failed miserably. The reason why I felt like I did so bad was because I wasn't confident in myself. I would hear myself say things in Spanish and immediately tell myself, I sound stupid. And I would defeat myself. For as soon as I defeated myself, I didn't care to try to want to apply myself the most or, or, or in my best way because I didn't trust myself. And that me lacking that trust and that confidence in myself has strongly played against me. My business is in a 97% Latino community, maybe even 98% Latino community. The language barrier is so apparent that I think back to like when I took Spanish, if I had known that this is what I was going to do in my life, I would have focused and put so much more into it. People who are joining dance teams, you join a dance team thinking, I just want to be on this team. Your main goal may be just like, I just want to do body rock. That's my goal. I just want to get on that body rock stage. That's why I joined this team. And then you get on that body rock stage and now you still feel like, okay, that was cool. But you have a sense of like, oh, I feel like I'm not fulfilled yet. And you realize you want to take your dance to the next level. Okay. So then you say, I'm going to leave the community and pursue work in the industry. Now you pursued work in the industry and you're struggling, you're struggling, you're struggling because it's not the same as the community and you didn't switch your mindset up. You didn't have the confidence in yourself to say, okay, I'm going into something brand new 
I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to just throw myself into this. And I have confidence that if I do fail, I will be able to pick myself up and I will be able to continue. You lose that sense of confidence when you're doing something new or when you're scared to speak on something. And I think that people need to have the same confidence they have in themselves talking about something that they know about, have that same confidence in asking a question on something that you don't know about. And I think that is like something that is very, very important and very, very like needed in this community. A sense of confidence and a sense of, uh, of approaching things in the right manner. Yeah. The yeah, big thing that's lacking right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, people are really insecure right now because of everything, all the craziness. But it sounds like you found a way because you are speaking, right? You are doing your research. You have a strong center. You have a group of people that support you. And you're not alone. Yeah. yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the most powerful thing is I'm not alone. Uh, I can't do this. No one can do this by themselves. We all play a part. We're all part of a puzzle. Um, we may be shaped differently, but we're all part of the same jigsaw puzzle that's trying to make, like, equality. Like, the puzzle is, like, almost complete, but there's, just, like, really, really big missing parts to this puzzle. And we have to fill those things in. Um, it starts at the top. It starts with the one at the top trying to figure out it starts from getting, I'm gonna say, it starts from getting 45 out. That's where it starts. Okay, yeah. 45 sure. gotta go. Mm -hmm. 45 gotta go. Quick. Quick. Um, because he's a symbol of hate. And hate is the strongest weapon possible. Hate can, it's, it spreads so fast. Hate spreads quicker than light. It's like the air. It just, you, once, you, once that hate is spewed, it's just out there. And now you're giving people the ability to be like, got some of that hate. Got some of that hate because I can relate to that hate. Nah, nah. You gotta get out. You you can't. We can't. We can't be. Our leader can't be leading with hate. You know. We just gotta. I I, I sucks because I don't have all. I don't have all the answers. I I have. Um, I have a sense of of honesty to know that I, I care about this enough to not keep my mouth shut, but I also am aware enough to know that I still need help. I still, there's still more knowledge to be sought. I don't know everything, you know? So that's why it's almost my place now is as much as I'm speaking, I'm trying to facilitate and I'm also trying to direct people in the right direction. Uh, I didn't ask for this. I didn't say like, you know what? I wanna be, I wanna be the head of the BSU for the dance community, no. There's been a BSU. And it's another thing people don't know about. There's a BSU within the dance community. You know, and a lot of us are part of it. Like, we know, like, Darky part of it, I'm part of it. Kyrie Williams is one of the people who are, like, heading it up. Like, there's a lot of people who are, there's a lot of black people in the community that are aware of what's going on, but we also understand, you know, what it is. And we're not trying to threaten the community that welcome, that's so welcomed us in. You know, like, though there's been, like, little side comments here and there that aren't made out of spite, they're just made in a joking manner, I would not be where I'm at if it wasn't for the dance community. There's no way, like, this dance community has taken me in, they've accepted me for who I am, they've pointed out my flaws to me, and I think they've pointed out my flaws to me because they genuinely care. I mean, I probably didn't realize it then, in the moment, but now I look back and I was like, yo, if they didn't care, no one, if no one cared, no one would say anything. Mm. You know what I mean? If I said something that someone felt was wrong and they didn't care, they wouldn't even care to disagree with me, they'd just be like, mm. But people will go and vocalize it because they, they genuinely care. So that's where it's at. Um, again, I don't have all the answers, but I have really good directional skills and I can point people where those answers come from, you know? And I'm the first person to say, I don't know, you know? And if I can say it, anybody should be able to say it. You know, if, if, if you don't know, say it and say it to somebody who does know so they can help you out. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you that you have this perspective that even though you had some bad comments or maybe fucked up sometimes in the dance community, you still feel a part of it. Still yeah. feel a huge part of it. Stacy says, Jay, so proud of you and your growth. Keep up your confidence and keep speaking your mind. People are listening and responding. You have a thank whole team Stacey. supporting you. Love you. Thank you, Stacy. And Stacy's one of the people, if it wasn't for Stacy. Uh, again, she's another person, like, I met her when I was on Culture Shock, and um, I was 
at Chapman University and I wasn't going to be there much longer. And I was like thinking about transferring to a school. I, I wanted to try to transfer to UCI specifically because I wanted to be on Kaaba Modern. I did not go to, I did not want to go to UCI for any other reason, except for a couple of my friends from high school were there. And I really wanted to be on Kaaba. And I met Stacy and Patrick on Culture Shock. And then they told me about Pac Modern. And I was like, oh, I remember seeing you guys on High Import Nights with the Bumblebee outfits. Y'all was tight. And from there, it's set. Like, I was like, bet. I transferred to Long Beach, went to Long Beach, um, predominantly just to be on Pac Modern, you know? And they, they accepted me. They brought me in. They, they showed me the ropes. Um, it was me and Mishi Boyer. We were the two black people on the team. I feel like she was the only black girl in the community in, in OC. And I was the only black guy in the community in OC. And uh, Pac Modern didn't care. Like the Phil even Pac, the club, they didn't care. They showed love. I was part of the club as well. I was able to get in touch with, you know, my other side and get more like resources and more knowledge. And it just became like a beautiful thing. And that was like the birth of me getting into the community. If it wasn't for Pac, I never would have met the people to start Chill Factor with. Um, it, it just, the, I, loved, I loved the dance community. I think that's why I never completely stepped away. I've, you know, for the past nine years or so, I've been, you know, trying to be as active as I can in the industry. Um, but I never, I've never completely stepped away from the community. Um, it's because I can't turn my back on someone who, who birthed me into dance. You know, I was only dancing for one year before and in high school and then boom, as soon as I graduated, went straight to culture shock, you know? And so I didn't, I didn't know much. I came in as a B-boy and a freestyler and Pac Modern and Culture Shock showed me the light. They, they introduced me to choreography. They introduced me to teaching. I didn't know you could teach. I, I didn't know about any of that, you know? So just, I'll never turn my back on the community and I want my community to continue to grow and I want my community to be aware and I don't want my community to repeat what is going on. Um, specifically because in the future, I want my children to dance. And I cannot condone bringing a child into this world the way it is right now. And I will not also condone bringing my child into a community that isn't aware. Because more than likely, that child is going to be interracial. So that child is going to be mixed. So they need to know that they can be accepted, loved, and appreciated in this community that thrives on unity, diversity, and love. You know, so. Yeah. Oh, and they will. With you being part Martin and part Malcolm X, yeah, they will. <laughs> Both of those parts are, are evident in you. See, see that so much. That's dope. But yeah, thank you though, Anna. I really, I appreciate you, man. Like we need these more. Like, that's one of the things that people were commenting heaviest on and on the Stacey thing was we need more of these. We need more forums like this. We need more of these. So these Boba Talks, you're doing an amazing thing because you're not just pinpointing it to one thing. You're not just sitting here talking about dancing all the time. You literally are tackling social um, issues and you're also like getting to know these people on a deeper level. You're, you're allowing the viewers to see these people that we may only view as dancers and choreographers. And you're like, yo, these are people too. They have real thoughts, real emotions, and they really care about these real life issues aside from the eight counts, you know? So I thank you for doing this and I, I hope that you inspire more people and anybody who is inspired, give your props to where it's due. Know who was doing it first and, and appreciate that. That's another thing. The, th the knowledge that we continue to spread, it only means something if we acknowledge where we got it from. So if anybody wants to do something similar to Boba Talk and they were inspired by Anna, let people know I'm doing this and I was inspired by Anna's Boba Talks because she gave me the strength and confidence to be able to say, I want to speak to people on a forum and get to know them on a personal level and educate the world on that. So that's what it needs to happen. You know, like we know about the era of biting and there's the, you're biting or are you, is it flattering? Are you biting someone or are you kind of like paying homage to them and respecting them and you have to go about it the right way? Taking someone's idea, yes, is biting if you don't give someone else credit for it. So I, I hope that there's more people who see the steezy thing. And I saw ML is doing a forum you know, with, with, a, with a bunch of black choreographers and um, influencers in the industry. And I'm sure after that happens, someone else will do one and then someone else will do one because that's what we want. But you got to remember to give credit to what credit's due. So yes. you've been doing this and you've been holding it down, Anna. Uh-huh. Dude, I love you. We, we have 20 seconds left. 
And I just want to say thank you, right? This is the least we could do. We needed to hear from you. Like, doesn't matter anything else right now, but all our Black brothers and sisters, we wanted to hear you. We wanted to share with you. We want you to know that you fucking matter, and especially in our community. So, yeah. peacing out. And I know I'll see you again, Jay. Thanks for being here.